All right, so my name is uh, Mohammed Azam, all right? And this talk is, of course, about IV kits in real life. And I said real life because I've actually used them in, like, real life uh, in a practical scenario. I'll talk about that. Uh, this is a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a senior mobile developer at Blinds.com, Microsoft MVP. Doesn't really matter over here, I guess. Uh, this is my web blog, AzumSharp.com. I do have a Azum Sharp YouTube channel. It has like maybe 5,000, 4,500 sub subscribers. It's about iOS development. And of course, it's on YouTube for free. Uh, Udemy instructor. I do only have one course on Udemy. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. Author, speaker, I write for Code Magazine, which is mostly a .NET magazine, but I publish iOS articles over there, which is kind of weird, but yeah. And I love to go to different places, I've been to like Costa Rica and all these to small places, basically. Uh, I work for Blinds.com, which is one of the few company, one of, one of the few cool companies in Houston. Uh, <laughs> or might be the only cool company in Houston. Uh, this is one of the pictures. This is like some sort of a Comic Con going on. And we have like this, like every, every uh, month or so, we have something going on over there. <laughs> but I work as a .NET developer. Well, I work as a senior mobile developer, but most of my work is like .NET, like JavaScript, CSS, mobile websites, C Sharp, ASP.NET, and C. But I'm really passionate about iOS, so I spent early morning at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., working on my own projects, inching like every step, like, you know, uh, progressing like each and every step every day and then releasing it. I have a couple of apps on the App Store. Um, I'm just going to go like 60 seconds on these. Uh, ABC Pop, it's a game. Coco's 2D 2010 release uh, made in one week. Uh, Kinder Pop, pretty much like ABC Pop, which is like a kid's game. Uh, for iPad, Metama Chicken. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was featured in some um, a magazine, uh, not magazine, sorry, Mad4 website, some website, not on the Apple Store, but from some website for kids doing addition subtraction. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the whole purpose of that site, I can say, don't worry about it. Uh, it's a free app, um, uh, to do list. You can download it from the App Store. This is the app that I. After games, I decided not, I don't really care about games. I don't play games. So uh, I'm going to do something that I kind of do on a regular basis, vegetable gardening or gardening in general. So I created this. This was featured on the App Store multiple times, and it's still considered the best vegetable gardening app on the App Store. Uh, so I was really proud of it because I you know, developed like 30, 45, or one hour a day early morning, and I pushed it out in 2012. And then it got featured in 2013, uh, January or something. Uh, this is also a free app. This is just uh, from the kindness of my heart. Uh, Houston got flooded, so I created like a crowdsourcing app like Waze, but for flooding, uh, so you're driving, you open this app, you shake your phone, and it's going to drop a pin indicating, don't come over here, it's flooded. It's you free. Yourself too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, oops, sorry. So you can, you can use it in anywhere, basically, right? Yeah. So this is the agenda for the talk, understanding IB kins. Then I'll talk about the Arrived app, which is on GitHub, a museum tour app, and Dude, Where's My Remote? It's a very small app uh, to find your remote. So what exactly are iBeacons? Now, iBeacons are, of course, uh, Bluetooth 4.0, low energy or low powered energy, and you can get iBeacons in many different forms. Now, this one that's being displayed, this is an ST mode iBeacon. iBeacon will send a signal but basically what happens is you enter a store, like a Macy's store or whatever, Panera Bread, and you enter a store or you're just go walking outside the store and you have the Panera Bread app installed, you get a notification, hey, uh, if you buy a bread, the soup is free or something like that. So it's context sensitive. It's not going to send you a notification while you're sitting at home watching some reality show and eating popcorn. It's going to send you a notification when you are actually there, all right? And these kind of different uh, signals that it sends. So the closest one is immediate. Now, if this is basically immediate, it's like, like this, like really close. And then we get like near. So this guy is like near. Far can be someone is standing outside this wall or standing outside this room. It can be far. And then unknown is that if it's like much further, which means like 60, 70 meters, it can become unknown. Uh, so these kind of different things you can interact, you can get hold of it. And based on those uh, proximity, you can have different actions. 
So one thing that comes to our mind is that is iBeacon just like a glorified name for GPS? And of course the answer is no. iBeacon is for indoor location and GPS or geofencing is mostly for outdoor. So indoor location, kind of like you enter Home Depot, you enter Walmart and it will tell you you're standing at aisle number 13, which is let's say toys or something, and then you're wondering and you're looking for some toys for your kids, and it's going to send you a message that, hey, you know what, this Barbie doll is on sale or this action figure is on sale. So this is kind of like an indoor proximity. The outdoor or geofencing is more about like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pass this road and this road, and uh, I'll be like in two mile radius to remember, just remind me I need to pick up mail from Walmart. So that becomes a much larger radius for geofencing that you cover. And indoor is like really small, you can actually direct the user to, you, can, you have to go to item 13, shelf number this, this and this, and you'll find the stuff you're looking for. It's much more narrowed down close. So iBeacon, I think Doug already mentioned, it's, uh, it also sends some signals that you can intercept. So it, it has a UUID, a major ID, and a minor ID. So UUID is of course a 16 byte long code, which can represent a brand. And this is just, I'm saying it, it can represent a brand, in your app it can represent anything you want. A major ID is a store. You can be like brand is like Walmart or Home Depot. Store is located in, I don't know, like Greensville. And then the minor ID is shelf number 13. And this all combined together represent maybe a product that you're trying to sell or market to other consumers. Now, iBeacons are, of course, there are hundreds of different iBeacons. The most popular one is, of course, the Estimote. It's cute, and uh, I think they were kind of like the first ones to basically put it out to the market in a nice way with the API and everything. So they do provide a very nice API, and they have other products like Neurables also, which I'm going to talk about. Particle, it's also really good. I have actually used Particle uh, when I was going to uh, Denver, Couple of, a couple of months ago in a vacation, I put this iBeacon into my luggage and I checked it in. And I have an app arrived that we're gonna uh, look at. And when my luggage arrived at the airport at the carousel, it pinged me that I've arrived picking me up. So that was a really good, good use of iBeacons. And then you can see there are different kind of iBeacons over there. Your phone, of course, starting from 5, uh, 5S and all that, they are also iBeacons. So once, I mean, you have already experience it, if you walk into the Apple Ice, I mean, Apple store, you'll get some sort of a notification that, okay, come, like Apple uh, iPad is like this, and Apple iPad is on sale, and things like that. I, I usually get those notifications once you enter the store. Your Mac can also act as an iBeacon. If you don't want to spend the money, you can you already have an iBeacon in your iPhone, and if you want to create an iBeacon, you can use your Mac to be acting as an iBeacon. Um, if you don't have the Bluetooth for, if you have an older Mac, like 2010, that I have at home, then you can buy like a dongle, it's like $15, $14, and it will make your Mac as acting as an iBeacon. And then you can download this free app, which is a Mac Access Beacon, and basically it will allow your Mac to, you know, send those IDs, like UUID, major ID, minor ID, and then your app that you're designing can intercept that ID, take that ID, and pretty much do anything you basically want. Testing device, of course, iBeacon. Uh, if you're testing it, you need a device. It's not gonna work on the simulator, so make sure that you have a device that you, if you're testing your app. So real life cases, I've already explained some of the real life cases. If you're entering into a hotel, or if you're entering into some sort of a restaurant, you're just passing by and it will give you a deal that hey, burger is like two burgers, buy one, get one free or something like that. Uh, in the shopping mall like Macy's, you can be at a shelf or uh, some sort of a table which has jeans set up and you go over there and it will tell you that jeans, this particular brand of jeans is available and it's on sale. Um, this is again for a coffee shop like Starbucks, you enter a Starbucks or whatever this is and then you get a deal like okay, you buy this drink and you'll get like a, some other stuff with it. Okay, this is of course from a museum. So in Europe, I know that there are certain museums uh, which are uh, 
unguided tour. So you just enter a museum with the app installed on your iPad or your iPhone, and the, the whole museum experience is going to tell you that what is the painting about. And we're going to see one of the apps that I designed, which is actually museum tours. So this is again for some Macy's or something. This is the Tupeland, which is in uh, Netherlands. Uh, this is a museum about flowers or tulips. And if you go to this museum, they are using eye beacons uh, throughout the museum. So if you are standing uh, with these flowers, like red flowers or some any kind of flowers, it's going to tell you, it's going to just refresh your iPhone. It's going to tell you what those flowers mean, where they came from, how they grow, and what's the history of those things. This is one of the ideas that I had. I, I don't know if anyone has implemented it, but if you're, if you're working in a company which has a large campus, like, you know, like a huge campus, like Google and all that stuff, so you can install iBeacon throughout your uh, campus, and then you can ask your employees to install an app, and then make sure that they or kind of encourage them to go and take a walk, and then you know kind of see that they're walking and they're staying healthy. You know, kind of like a health from a health initiative. And uh, by the end of the month, you give them like a hundred dollar card from McDonald's. So. <laughs> Target. Uh, Target is one of the, I think, few retail stores that is now have an initiative of installing iBeacons. I've read the news that they're installing 50 iBeacons in selected stores. I think Denver was one of them, New York, San Francisco, uh, and maybe Washington or something. But they're, they're trying to play with the idea of iBeacons. So once you enter uh, the store, and if you are, I don't know, at some hardware section, it's going to ping you that, okay, this thing is on sale. So these are the Estimode nearables. Now, iBeacons that I talked about, which are these ones, right? So these are mostly, they have a sticker. You peel off the sticker and you stick, off, stick it. So they don't really, they're not really for moving stuff. Like they're just there, you stick it, and then it will transmit a signal. And depending if the user comes near it, then you refresh the app and you show them depending what they want to see. But these are nearable, so basically sometimes you have to track your bicycle route, sometimes you have to track your pets like dog or cat, uh, sometimes you have to track, uh, I don't know, you can just put it on your shoe and then you can track if you have been wearing your deep shoes and how much you're running on a bicycle, you can track how much you have driven the bicycles. Bicycle instead of like uh, using your phone, because you can use your phone and run at the same speed as, I don't know, like you're stuck in traffic and driving a car. Or you can drive a car so slow that it kind of reflects that you're driving a bicycle. In Houston, apparently, you can do that. Uh, it's like traffic is like so bad. They are temperature sensitive. They have accelerometer support. And uh, they are, of course, really small, portable. I think for $100, you get 10 of these. And use cases are, of course, for a dog collar. Your dog is taking a walk and everything. How much walk your dog has done. Um, you can put it on a flower or flower vase that you don't forget to water or something. So it's mostly for items that can move, like your laptop. You can put it on your laptop. It's kind of small, so you can put it on your laptop. If your laptop moves and you have an app, it will get a notification that someone has moved your laptop. So you should check that what's going on. So let's take a look at the implementation. So everything for iBeacon is part of the CL Location Manager Delegate which is basically the main thing if you're doing any kind of map kit or map enable applications. Uh, you have a did enter region method, which is fired once you enter a region. So if an ID can is covering, let's say, area like over here, so if I enter, it's going to fire that particular did enter region event. Same thing with a did exit region, once you exit the region. So if I am over there and I walk over here and the region is only covered till here, then it's going to fire the did exit region. And then did range beacons. This is basically required to fire. This is basically saying, give me all the beacons. Give me all the beacons around here. Give me all the beacons around here. Uh, one thing to understand is that iBeacon just sends out a signal. It doesn't take in. You cannot post anything to the iBeacon itself. You can only uh, listen to the signal. And whatever signal they're sending, UUID, major ID, minor ID, you can use that to do whatever you really want. Yes? I'm sure you might answer this question. Isn't there a battery or something, or how long is that? Battery, yes. So that's a very good question. Now, estimate beacons, and let's see if I can, I think you can, let's see. You can see it like this one, right? Or do you want me to? 
So this is the Eskimo Beacon. They are cute, of course. Uh, the battery, I've asked them, the battery usually lasts uh, for them. For this one, it's like a year, year and a half. That's the battery. Now, the problem with Eskimo Beacons is that you can replace a battery. There's no way to replace a battery. Okay? So I asked them, this, what about after a year? What, should I, what am I supposed to do? So they told me to cut it open, like cut this, cut this guy open, and then change the battery, and they're going to send me like a new cover, a new whatever this shell. Okay. Now the other beacon that I have is a particle beacon, which is this one. It doesn't look uh, as cute, I guess. But this has a battery, like this one. And you think the battery lasts, um, I would say, three, four months, maybe. Uh, you can you can use this software to to make sure that it's not emitting like full power. So you can control how much power they're emitting, how much radius they're covering, uh, and it really depends on also that. But usually, I have seen uh, three to four months is a is a good ballpark for particle. Now there are some other ones that take like a double A cell, and of course that lasts maybe like two years. And I, I don't have those ones, but they have like so many different eye beacons around that. What about those stickers? Stickers, I, I'm not really sure how much the battery, but I, I'm gonna guess that it will be like a year and a half at least. Those stickers might last that, yeah. So did range uh, beacons, it's of course always firing, always checking if there's any beacon in range, if there's any beacon in range. Okay, authorization. Now, if you are doing iOS 8, I think it started from iOS 8, that you cannot really put the person, like a user location on the map, or you cannot even get the user location unless you say request permission. You have to request that, hey, I'm going to use your location. Will you allow this? Okay, so this is the method basically fired or request always authorization, and you call that, and you still have to do. Uh, info PLC, you have to go and write the message that will actually appear. So if you start this app, uh, it's going to say the application monitor your location to show promotion offers, blah, 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 do you agree? And then they say yes, and then you will be able to get the user's location. So this is started from iOS 8. This is kind of ne like necessary. If you don't do that, then your app will basically, it's not going to do anything. Okay. The other thing to make sure is that always make sure that your IB can have battery because sometimes you will have the IB can in your hand and you will not be able to see the IB can in like a console or you will not be able to detect IB can. So first, before even starting with IB can, make sure that IB can has, has battery and everything is, is charged or the battery is at least new. So Eskimo does provide a very nice app, their own app is called Eskimo app. Uh, which can manage these things, which can manage, like, which can show you that, that you have IV cans and it has batteries and how much power they're emitting. And you can also change the radius. At time. I need to cover the radius of 30 meters. I need to cover the radius of 10 meters. So you can do that with the app itself. You have to make an account with them, like a username and password, but you can do that. All right. Background monitoring. This is really cool, I'm going to show you, and hopefully it would work, is background monitoring means that your app doesn't have to be like on the foreground running. Like once you, let's say if I'm at the airport and my uh, ID can is inside a luggage, uh, I don't have to be looking at the app, like my own app, that, oh, it has arrived, it has arrived, it has arrived. No, I can't be doing anything. I can be calling someone, I can be doing some, some to-do list or reading news. So uh, ID can, does background monitoring, so it can fire events in the background. It can even fire events if your app is killed. So if you manually kill your app, like double tap and then swipe up and then delete the app, it will still fire the events if, for the background, which is kind of cool. Because I mean, if some people actually like to kill their app like once they're once they're done with it, which is kind of weird. Uh, my parents kind of unhook their unplug their router once they're done with the internet. So uh, it's kind of like that, I guess. All right, so let's see some demos. So I already have the code. Uh, let's go. Let's go first see the demo itself. All right. So I'm gonna show you the arrive app. All right. So 
here is the arrived at, um, and you can see that battery is out right now, so the battery is not there, right? So I'm gonna launch the arrived app, it's gonna say, okay, it's kind of plain, uh, nothing there. I'm gonna say add, attach an image. So basically, I'm at home basically at this point, and I'm kind of attaching everything, like I need to track this item, all right? So I'm gonna track my bag. So I'm gonna say attach an image and take a new picture. I'm gonna take a picture of my bag, which has a kind of pink lining in it for some reason. I'm gonna say, you, uh, yes, use the photo. Now, one of the reasons that I didn't push this app to the app store is that I don't think people will use it because you actually do have to know this guy. And I don't know if there's any way, I mean, people are not going to enter a 16 digit code ever, right? I mean, that's just weird. So I'm just, so I have hard coded it, and of course, uh, the particle, sorry, this one, the particle beacon has a different UUID than Eskimo beacon. And particle beacon, so if I have at least five or six of these, all of these will have the same UUID, this code, all of them will have the same, but it will have different major and minor ID. That's how it differentiates. Uh, same with the Eskimo. It will have the same UUID, which is a 16 bit, a 16 by code, but it will have a different major and minor ID. Now you can go ahead and change if you want, uh, using the Eskimo application, you can go ahead and change that. But this is the default value for particles. So that particle is, of course, these beacons. So I'm gonna go ahead and say pink bag so that I know what I'm talking about. And now I have to find out the major and minor ID. So I've already written it out. It says 1-1. One, one. So 1-1. One, one. And say, so since the battery is out right now, and battery out really means that this beacon is out of range. The practical way is that if I just go out, but this is kind of like saying that battery out means uh, it's out of range right now. So at this point, I've actually checked in the beacon inside my luggage. I've checked it in. They're now loading it into the plane, all right? So let's see what happens when I'm at the carousel on the other side, if I land in Denver or Greenville. So as soon as I enter, you can see that it says arrived over there. It changed from departed to arrived. So it knows that, okay, I found some beacon. I, I know the UUID, I know the major ID, I know the minor ID, and uh, I can see that it has arrived. So I'm gonna take out the battery. So once I take out the battery, you'll see that it doesn't really change. It doesn't really say that it has departed. It doesn't really change instantly. It is eventually going to change, and now the event uh, did exit region is fired. So did exit and did enter region, they are not fired instantly. This is one of the things that you must uh, uh, understand as quickly as possible because if, if you keep debugging, and I debug it like for a long time to find out that it is a Apple decision to not fire did enter or did exit instantly. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Sometimes it takes 30 seconds, sometimes it takes two minutes. The reason for this is to make sure that the person has actually entered or exited the region. So let's say uh, this is like Home Depot and they have like ID can and I go in. So if it's firing instantly, so my phone will ping right now because this is like kind of like an entrance, right? I don't really want to do that because, uh, so Apple doesn't really want to do that because maybe the person says, oh, my, uh, forgot my keys in the car. So let me go get that. So it's still at this point, person has entered you're not 100% sure that he or she has actually entered the store. So you have to wait. This event will be fired maybe 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. It also depends on your device. On I've seen on faster devices like iPhone 6 and iPhone 6S. iPhone 6 actually firing much more, a little bit quickly. I have iPhone 5, uh, so it's a little bit delayed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back. And I'm just browsing and I'm waiting at the baggage claim, and I insert this. And let's see if eventually it finds out that or not. So, pink bag has arrived. I'm gonna click on that, and of course it says arrive. All right. I'm gonna take it out again. So we've seen that it, it, it does fire on the background. So on the foreground, we've already seen that now I was away from my app, 
and I was just browsing some news or browsing some other stuff, and it did fire, it did show that the baggage has arrived, and this is just a notification, and I can, we can go over the code. Um, so you can see that it's arrived. Now, the last thing I'm going to try to do, and hopefully it will work, is that I'm just going to kill the app altogether. All right? So once it says it's departed, I'm going to go back and kill the complete app. I'm going to go over here and just kill the app. So now it's gone. Okay? So now there's no app. It's, it's not even running in the background. So let's see if it works. So I will enter, I will plug it in, it has arrived. Sometimes I've seen it's not working, but sometimes it takes a lot longer. Uh, <coughs> hopefully it will do. But usually, I don't know what it's doing, but usually at this time, if it's not running in the background, it spills sometimes, well, it should have done, but it says that uh, it has arrived, okay? Let's see if I have to just unplug it. Now, I've seen a couple of times that it doesn't work. And it seems like it's just not working right now. But if you open the app, it works. So even if you kill the app, I've seen it that sometime it, for some reason, <laughs> So it took some time, see? Uh, so there it is. All right. So let's see uh, the code for it. I'm going to take this off. And switch to the laptop. And this is the arrived app. Now, arrived app, I think it's written here. Yeah, I wrote it in like Objective C some time back. So, add baggage, uh, it's like nothing is going on over there. We're just taking the IDs. Basically, this is a view that is. You're adding the UUID, major ID, minor ID, and they're taking a picture. I'm saving the picture in the photo camera, I mean the photo uh, roll. And basically all the fun basically happens, I believe, in the baggage table view controller. Okay? So the first thing you need to set up, uh, do is to set up the authorization. So in iOS 8, if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to work with the location manager. It's not going to do anything. And basically all it does is it calls always a request authorization. And in info.plist, you will find this entry, which is like NS uh, location always usage uh, description. And you have to have that in iOS 8 and above to do that. Then I'm setting up the beacons. And if you go over here, I have like whatever the beacon I entered, like UUID was already there, the major ID and the minor ID. Uh, and I have start monitoring the beacons and start ranging for the beacons. You have to call these methods or else the beacons are just, just there in, the, in your storage and they're not really doing anything. Now we go down to the uh, location. Let's see if I have that method over here. Okay. Now, I don't have the did enter region and did exit region because I'm not doing anything inside that method. Now, if you do what I'm doing, which is inside the did range beacons, it's not really a good idea to do this, okay? Why? Because this is fired literally like every second. It's like, are there beacons, are there beacons, are there beacons, are there beacons? But for my app, when you're at the airport with two kids that are crying, uh, I don't want to wait for two more minutes. I want to be like out, all right? So I added all the code in the did range beacons, which is firing all the time. Um, and basically, once it finds the beacons, uh, I get the ID, I update the service, and I send a notification. Pretty simple stuff that's going on, right? So make sure if you are using did enter region, did exit region, which is like a preferred way to make sure uh, that it's not going to be instant. It is going to take a little bit of time, sometimes two seconds, sometimes two minutes. Uh, so if you're designing something, it really depends. I mean, I think if you're designing something for a museum where it's a large museum and it will take some time, like you can have like a entrance and you have to buy some tickets and then you have to go. So at the entrance, you can have something that's going to initiate. You bought tickets, welcome to the museum. And then when you go to the painting, it's going to refresh or whatever. Okay. So this is one of the, one of the apps. The other app that I want to show you is actually the museum tour, tour app. Yes? Um, just before you move on, 
I think I missed it, but when you had to enter that long digit, what what was that for? Like, why did you have to use that? The UUID? Yeah, the UUID. So UUID, UUID yes, so UUID, every device, every ID can divide like this one or the estimate one, they come with some sort of uh, identifier. Okay. So they, that's basically their identifier, their unique key. Oh, so for you to be able to actually write code for it, you... Yes, you have to know that. But why do you have to like enter it onto, the, onto your app on your phone? I oh, I mean, I'm just... I mean, if you don't have those IDs, then there's no way you can track. Now, the, the reason that I had that in the text box is just it's just going to pass in to some other function and it's just going to save it. I mean, I didn't have to enter it. Oh, so in case yeah, you get no. a new one. Yeah, in, in case you oh, get a new I one, um, you're right. I mean, I, I can make a constant and assign yeah. it and I can remove that field, remove the text field completely. Mm -hmm. But if I get a new one or if I change the ID, then I can change it over there. And that's the, whole, that's the main reason that I didn't push out of the app store because a normal person is never going to. I mean, even I'm not going to, I just wrote it in code, and it appears over there. I'm not going to type it in, so it's way too long. Does every estimate have the same UUID? Every estimate, I believe, have the same UUID, but they have, of course, different major and minor IDs. And okay. you can go ahead and change, using the estimate uh, application, you can go ahead and change UUID, major ID, minor ID, and you can you can do that. Yeah, I have a question about that, so yeah. the uh, estimate thing actually talks to the device? Yes. And that device listens to it and then it changes it? Yes. Okay, so what's stopping you from walking into a museum and changing all of their IP? It's very good question. Now, the problem with that is you cannot, there's no way, well, I won't say there's no way, there are some low-level APIs which you can use to if you, let's say, enter a museum or a Macy's, then you can get all the IDs and then you can use that. Unfortunately, you cannot push that particular app to the App Store. If Apple finds out that you're doing that, your app is 100% going to be rejected. So, and the reason is the same. If you enter Macy's, you get all the IDs, you go home, make an app, and then you publish it to the App Store, people download, they enter Macy's. Hey, why are you at Macy's? Go to some other store. There's a good deal going on over there. <laughs> so, uh, so, in order to avoid that, if you you can you can get the IDs, and there are some uh, I think Mac apps that does that uh, that they can get the IDs. I don't think they're on the App Store; they're just on some websites. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you push it to the App Store, it will be rejected. Apple will not allow it, and for that exact same reason. But there's nothing the stopping the developers. No, there's nothing. You can install it on your phone or your, on your Mac, but you cannot push it on the App Store. And I guess if you don't push it out the app store, then no one downloads it. So. I guess what he's saying is if you did that, could you write an app that would go in and change their numbers and then their app wouldn't be able to communicate with us? I don't know if you can change. I, I'm sure that you can. You well, can yeah, that's that. what I was saying. You were saying that you, this Eskimo app can mm -hmm. change the Eskimo app can change it. So yes, so I, I would say yeah, maybe that you can also change that if yes, you can get those ideas. Eskimo app must have a key that's using, that's, that's using some encrypted I'm sure if you figure that key out, you'll do the same thing, right? It's just over the air. Well, I could just take their app and walk into the app. There may be some other app. Maybe you have to have those IDs registered. All right. So the next stamp I want to show you is the Museum Tour app. I'll take this away. What it seems like to me is that these companies, Eskimo, Eskimo, they want to manage these, is what it sounds like to me. They want to sell 10,000 of them to Macy's and have managed that. Would you agree with that? That's their, they do that's have like a dashboard, yes, on yeah, the website, yeah. so they do manage these things. Yeah, yeah that, was, that would make sense. <laughs> Hopefully, that was going there. So, here we go. So, I'm going to start the museum app. This also uses IV things. And these use estimate ID pins. So it has whatever the information, museum tour, start button, something say start. And say looking for beacons. Now ideally, uh, and I believe that I have done that, ideally you will have uh, like a proximity near. Because immediate really means like really close. And but for this app, I think I've done immediate just for the sake of the demo. Okay, so it's looking for beacons, and all the beacons, if you, if you have estimate beacons, you can turn them upside down, and they will go to sleep. 
so they will not consume that much battery. So right now, all of these are kind of sleeping mode right now, okay? So let's say I go near a painting over here, okay? So let's say this, this is a painting, and I go. So as soon as I go near a painting, it's going to refresh. Okay, so and then it's going to show something related to that particular beacon. And I can go ahead and look at the material, I can look at the painting. The great thing about this is that you can change this dynamically. I mean, if you have a server or some file that is managing this uh, information, you know, you can change and you can update uh, the information related to the painting. Let's say you find something new about the painting, you can update, you can add something. You can keep on constantly updating uh, the painting or the painting or the material, whatever you have, all right? Um, so now if I take this out and I take some other beacon, which is like a mint. So now it refreshes and it shows you like a different. And of course, I already told you that I'm, I'm, I'm checking for proximity, which is near. And near is like really near. Most probably you don't want to do that in a practical application. You want to do at least, I mean, immediate. You want to do near. Near is kind of like maybe I'm standing over here. This is near and this is the painting. This kind of makes kind of sense. Uh, but for the demo, I'm just using immediate, all right? So now I will go to some other painting, and then it uh, refreshes with the painting of a boy and all the text and other things, okay? And all of these information, like the images, the title, uh, the major ID, minor ID, uh, the text that you see on the screen, everything is coming from just an XML file. I can show you, it's pretty simple. Um, now you might be wondering what happens if you bring all the beacons close together, right? So chaos. <laughs> so this is really what happens when all the beacons are really close, okay? Uh, and you don't really want to do that. So if you're designing a retail application or a museum application, most probably you want to spread out the beacons so they're not like interfering with other ranges. And that's why I have these beacons somewhere else, like over here. Okay, so let's look at some of the code for this. Now this code was written in Xcode 6.4 um, and Xcode 7 has a lot of issues, so I'm not gonna run this and you'll see everything red, but don't worry about it. First, let me show you the, where'd it go? But it's for just an XML file, okay. Okay, so basically what I do is I have a Dropbox, I read this XML file, uh, basically just some XML tags. Oh, sorry. Here we go. So basically this is the XML file. I'm trying to pull up this file, I don't know where it got lost, but anyway. But um, so this is the XML file, pretty simple, like a title and all that stuff, title and detail and major ID, minor ID, review ID. Very simple stuff. I'm just reading this file, parsing this file, getting the, all the beacons, uh, and then basically over here it start monitoring. So pretty much the same code that we use for the Arrive application, we are using it over here. Um, thus the proximity is immediate in this case instead of far or near. So immediate which is really, really, really close, okay? And basically this is some hard fix for the scroll view. So basically it's just getting the information and then it refreshes the UI with the information that it receives from the XML file. I want to show you the XML file. I don't think it's working for some, I'm not even connected to internet, maybe that's why. Yeah, I'm not even connected to internet, so that's another problem. But I had it open, I don't know why it's not working. But the XML file was only like a title, a UUID, detail, major and minor ID. Simple four or five tags. And the great thing, of course, again, is that you can change the XML file, and when a new customer walks into the museum, you will get completely new experience, new images, and you can do a lot of stuff with that. Or you can have a database somewhere remotely. Okay? Any question at this point? So this is very similar to the Arrive app. Yeah. So, does this work with Android too? Good question. I'm going to cover that at the 
for the n, okay? Um, all right, so, so the last one, yes. Tested anything like like uh, communicating with this? Uh, there are some uh, interfaces uh, which are ninja blocks, which is like a bridge between a bridge and a software software and hardware bridge between these devices for in-house use or uh, Internet of Things. Uh, but it, yeah, so maybe that also allows you to do that. Yeah. Because using that, you can control your view light. Using that, you can control your Nest thermostat. So let's say you just, uh, like I have one iBeacon in my daughter's bag. Uh, she's like four years old. Uh, so when she arrives uh, from the bus, so I know that it pings me that the bus has arrived, goes. So I just say, hey, my wife is just go pick her up. And she's arrived, something like that. So, uh, so that's, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I don't have to be like outside uh, in summer or something. It will ping me when she arrives. So that's a, another good use of that. So the last one is the, uh, how much time do we have? About 10 minutes. Okay, so uh, the second last one, I would say, uh, is uh, the Find My Remote, okay? It's a very simple app. I think uh, that's already shown you something similar. It's a it's just saying RSS, uh, RSI ID. And it's basically nothing, just a text box. Uh, I mean, not a label. And it's saying that just a RSI ID. It's like a signal strength, basically. Okay. So if I and I lose the remote all the time, and I'm not saying that this is going to pinpoint you that oh, there's a remote under the couch or anything like that, but it might help you kind of give you an idea of where the remote is. Now, Eskimo has a indoor API for that. Uh, you need uh, four Eskimo beacons to pinpoint a particular thing. And guess how many I have? Three. So <laughs> you know how to do that? But they, they were kind enough to send me three. Okay, so, uh, so if I take it a little bit away, and you can see it's uh, the, the value keep on increasing, which is kind of like, okay, your remote is kind of far, far. Uh, but of course, if I take it like really close, it's going to say like 35 or something. It's it's not pinpointing anything, basically, it's kind of giving you a little bit of hint that the you know, remote might be over there or might be over here. Um, but if you have, yes, so if, if you want to pinpoint or if you want to even uh, uh, plot the whole room using pinpoint position, you need to have four, I think four eye beacons. And, uh, and then you can use their indoor location manager API that they have, uh, which allows you to pinpoint position or draw basically the, the room and all that stuff. Okay, so this was pretty simple stuff. It was just displaying the receipt signal strength. Okay, let me move back over here. You need to program your phone to say you're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. <laughs> no, hold it, hold it. I think it's stuck over here. Let me see what's going on. Okay. Finding all the beacons, so you can't do that. I already answered that, but your app will be rejected. I have seen some apps that are doing that, uh, Mac apps. Android, now, um, Eskimo has the SDK for Android that you, that you can use to, to do the same stuff. And just like iBeacon is basically kind of like an Apple thing, Eddie Stone is kind of like a protocol for uh, for Google, so and it will Eddie Stone will also work for iOS devices. So that's you will have to make a choice. Of course, most of the time it, the choice will be to if you're in the retail market or anything like that to cover as many devices as, as you like. So you can go with Eddie Stone, or you can make like two separate, of course, Android and iOS app using the Eskimo beacons using their SDK that they have. I do have a small can I pull out the Android device? No one is gonna like throw stuff at me. <laughs> <laughs> right. No promises. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Okay, let me, uh, hopefully it will work with the, all right. So this doesn't have any UI, nothing, okay? So it's, it's all, all it's going to do is uh, put something on the console. So that's why I'm hooked up to the device because if I run the simulator, most probably it will be midnight. Uh, let's see. So I hopefully it will run on the device. So this app, if it runs, it's just going to console out some stuff like uh, run. Yeah. It takes forever to, to run over there. Okay, so it's running over here. You can see something going on on a console. It says zero ID can found. It's looking for estimate ID pins, and I believe it's not able to find it because all of them are sleeping. If I turn one over, hopefully it will find something. Or nothing. But eventually I've seen that it takes a long, long time. For some reason on Android it takes, or it takes a long time to recognize these baked or something. Uh, I was testing it out yesterday and it was taking forever. And these also have accelerometer built in, so if it tips over or something, yeah, you can get a notification. I think Bluetooth is on and everything is on. But yeah, if it was working correctly, then you will see simply just a number, like one ID can found, two ID, or three ID can found. Um, all right. Let's close this. All right, let's go. So we are reaching the end of the. So to some of the resources, uh, learning I Beacon by Craig Wilkes is a very nice, uh, kind of like a under 200 page book, in which he also goes ahead and covers uh, ninja blocks and all that stuff. The Wendelin website is of course always great for I Beacons or anything I related. I've done some uh, YouTube channel videos, 66, 67, and 68, which are part numbers, in which I covered the particle beacon. Mac acts as beacon. If, you're, if you don't have iBeacon, you can convert your Mac computer into an iBeacon. Run this app. It will give you a UUID, the major ID and minor ID. And uh, just go ahead and create an app, and it will in intersect that or take that, and then you can use anything you want. Arrived app is on the GitHub. I didn't push it out to the, uh, to the store. It is an uh, older version, so 6.4 Swift. So it most probably, uh, also I'm using 2.0, so it doesn't compile on that. I haven't updated that for that. Uh, so you will see some uh, errors over there. Uh, but you will see the code is pretty straightforward, and the same code is actually used in a museum app or any other app that you are actually doing. I contact adamsharp at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at adamsharp, and my blog is uh, adamsharp.com. Uh, and uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, anything related to ID cans or anything, I'll be here till tomorrow. And uh, yes. Keep on wanting to do like a and that's kind of part of permanent replacement that just utilize batteries. Is there Plugs in, or could you use like a pack or something in a production environment? Like an ID pin that's hooked up to the, like the ball? Yeah. I have not really seen that. I have seen ID pins with like a double A battery that lasts like two years, but hooked up to a wall. I'm pretty sure that there will be, there should be something related to that, uh, but I have, personally, I have not encountered anything that's plugging up to the wall. I mean, yeah. No question, so thank you very much.